All right, fig lovers, this is Ross the Fig Boss. Today's video, we're talking about the Brava crop. If you're not familiar what the Brava crop of figs is, there's actually two distinct crops of figs. One that ripens about 30 days earlier is called the Brava, and that ripens and forms on last year's growth. The main crop actually forms on the new growth. So as the trees are now starting to wake up here in the Philadelphia area, not only are they putting out new leaves, and new branches, but they're also swelling their brabas. The brabas are getting larger on the branches. That's the first crop, as I mentioned. And in about 90 days from today, roughly, I will have my first ripe braba fix. That's how long it takes. Um, and so this is a really valuable crop for people in mild places. Uh, because it does ripen 30 days earlier, figs are a fall fruit. They're usually typically ripened later in the season. You need about 150 to 180 frost-free days to reliably ripen most varieties. And so the Brava buys you an extra 30 days, which is awesome. Uh, so people in like the Pacific Northwest, San Francisco, uh, you know, the United Kingdom, milder parts of Europe, this is a really important crop. Here in the Northeast where I'm at in the Philadelphia area, it's a bit unreliable sometimes. We've had such a mild winter here, I did forget to mention this in the video we talked about with the in-ground trees I have over here, we went around the yard and showed you guys kind of the results of the winter protection we did. And we had great winter survival, not necessarily because of the protection, but because our, our winter was so mild. We only got down to about 15 or 14 degrees Fahrenheit, which was unbelievable. I mean, I've never been a part of the fig season that was this mild, or a winter time that was this mild while I was growing fig trees. And so this is big for the figs and the Brava crops, because the Bravas are on the trees. You can see them not only here on the potted ones, which is normal as we protect them and put them in winter storage, they're away from that cold, but also the in-ground figs are so reliable now, especially more with their Bravas. I find the potted figs can be a bit finicky here and unreliable in the Northeast. It's really important, even though we have a shorter season climate, our spring fluctuates so much in temperature that the colder nights that might come in can actually cause the trees to abort their brabas. And for that reason, I've never really put a whole lot of attention and care and desire really into brabas here in the Northeast. But I know it's possible to have a reliable braba producer, especially if the tree is in the ground. The nighttime temperatures that fluctuate doesn't affect those trees nearly as much. It can. But because the, the winter was so mild here, I should be expecting fantastic results from my fig trees in terms of their Brava. So those are the two requirements. You need a mild winter and you really need a, a, a spring that doesn't fluctuate and get too cold. But one of the trees I really wanted to show off to you guys because it's still too early to really count our chickens when it comes to Brava's. As I said, they, they still can fall off, but this tree here is called Prosciutto. Uh, it's an Adriatic styled fig. For those of you guys who don't know what Adriatic is, it's one of the first commercially grown figs here in the United States. It's a green fig with a dark red interior that tastes like strawberries. And there's so many names for it. This one's called Prosciutto. Uh, introduced by Aaron Del Monto at New Jersey Fig Farm. Shout out to Aaron because what I've been finding amazing about this fig tree, last year it produced about 12 Brabas and all of them ripened and were amazing. I mean, they were some of the best Brabas I'd ever tasted. They're comparable to the main crop and I would put it in a class of Brabas and main crop along with a fig like Violet de Bordeaux. There's not too many Bifera varieties. And what I mean by Bifera is they produce both crops, the main crop and the Brava. If it's Unifera, it only produces the main crop. And in terms of the quality of both of the crops, usually the Bravas are usually just not so good. Um, and the main crops typically a lot better, but there are two trees. Like I said, this one here, and also um, Violet de Bordeaux, I find are really almost in a class of their own. The Brabas taste so darn good compared to the main crop. And uh, for that reason, if this can be a reliable fig, a reliable Braba producer, I would wholeheartedly recommend it to people, not only in mild places that need that Braba crop and want that Braba crop, 
but also people in like Southern California and Texas and Arizona, Florida, people with these really long growing seasons that can ripen an Adriatic fig uh, and enjoy it to a high quality uh, as dry climates can. And then also get that earlier crop of Brebas that's so desirable in these areas just before the main crop starts to ripen. Uh, so if I'm someone in California and Southern California and I'm recommending some fig varieties to people, always recommend either Desert King or Villette de Bordeaux. And now I feel really good about recommending this prosciutto tree. But the thing is, and this is what makes it so amazing, is that not every Adriatic fig or Verdino it's called in Italy, it's so commonly grown all over the world. It has so many names for it. And not only is there so many names, but they're actually not all the same. They're all slightly different. And that's the beauty of growing all these different named varieties. You find that there's similarities, but when you really look at them closely, you also see some differences. And one of the biggest differences with this one, I'm finding compared to the others, and maybe you guys know of an Adriatic that produces a reliable Breba, let me know down in the comments if you do, because I don't know of one. I've been asking around, and this to me seems like one of the most reliable. I think someone, I think my friend Bill mentioned uh, Rockaway Green. There's also another one here right behind it, also in a 15 gallon. This is called Verdino del Nord from Tatiana, and it's actually just a type of Verdino from Tuscany. It's uh, really the typical Verdino of Tuscany, which uh, is such a popular fig all throughout Italy. I mean, it, every household in Italy at one point, I was told in Tuscany by my friend Ciro, shout out, shout out to Ciro, he said that everyone had a Verdino tree. Uh, and I know it's, it's obvious. So, uh, you know, I don't know necessarily if them all gonna produce a Breba like that, but these two certainly do. And this prosciutto definitely does and seems like a higher quantity. And I'll just wrap up this video because it is too early to count my chickens. I can't say that that thing is as reliable as I want it to be just yet. I really like to have more years with the trees before I just go gung-ho with this. But this is an in-ground prosciutto tree right here. This is now entering, I think, its third year in the ground. It survived this winter. It survived last winter. And now on the branches, I would guess we're going to probably produce at least 10 Breba on this tree. Uh, assuming they all ripen and don't fall off before they're mature. But you can already see here on these branches, if I zoom in a little bit, you will see that the branches are starting to swell uh, and the Brebas are starting to get bigger. I think this one branch there has about uh, 10 Breba on it alone other branches on the on the same tree also are starting to produce some and so to me that's just it's just really amazing um anyway we're gonna keep you guys i'm really trying to keep you guys updated this year more about these brebas so we could talk more about them and learn more about them and as these trees i think a lot of the in grounds are going to produce some this year so we will talk more about them um just because we have them this year and uh so stay tuned for that if you like this video please let me know down in the comments like the video, subscribe, and check out some of the information we have on the blog. My goal is actually to write up an article on Brebas. I haven't done that yet. It's one of the few topics I haven't covered, but it'll be there soon, guys. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you for the next one. Take care.